The world is now going to the end time. At this time, when epidemics are on the rise, human casualties caused by war and natural disasters are getting worse. This reality clearly shows that we are living in the generation of the last time. Before the days that God destined past and the cultivation of mankind is completed, He will cover the whole world with fiery works of the Holy Spirit once again. And He will show the love of God in the path to salvation to all the souls of the world. The duty of spirit having this work of God has been assigned to our church. On July 25, 1982, Mami Center Church was opened under this mission given by God the Father. Dr. Gerald Lee, the senior pastor, completely relied on God alone with prayer and began to march in faith, so God created things out of nothing. The works that were proclaimed on the altar have been fulfilled more greatly than we could have hoped and imagined. As a result, many people, not only in Korea, but also around the world, accepted Jesus Christ and understood the gospel of holiness and changed into true believers. This, this year marks the 40th anniversary of our church's opening. In the 40 years, there were not only times of glory, there were also times of crisis and sometimes times of suffering to gain the time of glory. However, we have to move forward with our faith and passion to overcome the crisis and achieve the remaining vision God the Father gave us. Now, we are again standing on a new road. 40 years together. Tomorrow to be together. Until the final providence that God has planned is fully accomplished, Mammin will run fervently only with faith. We give all thanks and glory to God the Father who let us celebrate the 40th Church's opening anniversary. The 2022 Mami Summer Retreat will be held from August 1st to 3rd at Oak Valley Resort in Wonju, Gangwon-do. Thank you to everyone who has been watching GCN through satellites. Korea S5 satellite broadcasting ends on July 31st. If you watched through satellites, please switch to KT OLED TV number 882 or YouTube broadcasting from August 1st. On Sunday afternoon, Pastor Alexander Tabaranu from Moldova Mammi Church is preparing a sermon. He had a small but happy talk with the church staff, and he received a prayer from acting senior pastor. You are now going to preach. How do you feel? It's before the preaching. I'm not nervous, but I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I received Dr. Sujin Lee's prayer. I believe that the members and I will receive grace through this sermon. He was in charge of the Sunday evening service sermon before returning to Moldova. From meeting Mamin to fulfilling his ministry for eight years, the whole process went through his mind like a flash. Missionary Alexander Dabaranu confesses that 
Everything was the grace of the Lord. Finally, the sermon has begun. Dear mommy members, brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings in the name of the Lord. As I was going up to the podium to preach, I thought of senior pastor who had delivered numerous sermons from this altar. His words of life from this very altar brought me out of hell. Pastor Alexander Dabaranu, a young man called by the Lord, a young man who changed by the senior pastor's messages, established a branch church in Moldova in Eastern Europe. Let's hear the story of what plan God had in his first calling. Hello, I'm Pastor Alexander Tabaranu. Hallelujah. Influenced by his Christian mother, missionary Alexander Tabaranu maintained faith in his own way when he was little. But because it was not a faith from his own experience, he gave up easily to the environment that was not good. Then one day, I got involved in a gang fight with my friends and had my shoulder broken. I was poor in spirit. I was poor in spirit and I watched a Christian broadcast. At the time, I happened to come across the sermon of senior pastor. It was a sermon about hell. What I remember was that people in hellfire suffered so much that they splashed and danced like salt in a heated pan. I was amazed at the fact that there is a pastor who preaches such spiritual sermons in this age. People these days want to hear funny and comforting words, not scary and spiritual words like this. After that, I started to listen to his sermons every night at 11.30 from TBN Russia. The more he listened to senior pastor's messages, the more he came to know the way of true faith. He started preaching the gospel of holiness to everyone he met, thinking that he should spread this precious message to more people. Many people were interested in this precious preacher message, so many members of the church I attended at the time listened to senior pastor's sermons because of me. The pastor and workers of the church didn't like it and warned me several times not to preach it anymore. Regardless of this warning, I and others who came to know this gospel of holiness recovered the first love and received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Since I thought it was the words that helped us to clearly realize the purpose of life, I had no choice but to preach. Then one day, the pastor and workers of that church called me and said like this, I will bless you now, so please don't come to our church anymore. You, your ministry in our church has finished. So I and some of the church members left the church and started together at home and to worship. 
The number of people gathered increased, and so after three meetings at home, we found a second worship place with a size of about 50 square meters. Six months later, the number of believers increased, and we had to find a third and larger sanctuary. We found a bigger place, and the construction was done to decorate it as the current church. Moldova m a m i Church started as a home church with nine members and achieved a great revival to move to the third sanctuary. And it was the end of December in 2017. One day, I got a call telling me and, bro- and my brother to come to the police station. He said, you have been conducting illegal gatherings. It is illegal to gather more than 20 people without registration and permission under Moldova law. We said very honestly, we didn't really know much about the law. We met for worship and only doing good things through gatherings. Then they saw our sincerity. After the conversation, the police officer said that we had done something illegal anyway, so um, he would make a report and hand it over to trial. And he said that until the result of the trial came out, he would put a sign on the entrance of the church saying, do not enter, and that we would not be able to gather for a while. Naturally, we were unable to hold our daily prayer meeting, which we consider as life. But my brother, missionary Vitali, said, I will bear all the legal responsibilities, so continue to hold prayer meetings and worship services. We can't stop worshiping and praying. So we did not stop worshiping and praying. Shortly thereafter, the judge summoned my brother Vitaly to take full responsibility. The judge said we'd be fined because we had a meeting illegally. Other than that, he couldn't find anything wrong. The financial management was clean and we paid the taxes well. However, there was a problem we were facing. It was the matter of church registration. The judge said that we could not continue together illegally, so we had to register or a church would be closed with a big amount of fine. One way is to join an already registered denomination, whether it is the Baptist or Pentecost. I looked into this method, but I could never join them because of the doctrinal difference. The other way is to create and register our own denomination. But the lawyer said that this was almost impossible. It's because it required many people's endorsement signatures and a lot of tricky procedures and paperwork. For registration of the denomination, there was Uh, a lot to prepare. The names of those who were responsible for giving the title, the committee of organization, and so on. We prayed in one heart all the more fervently for this. There was no way other than to close the church or to register as a denomination, even if it's dif- it was difficult. So we prayed with faith and prepared for the registration of the denomination. 
그렇게 서류를 준비하는데 As we prepare the documents, all of our church members assign the denomination registration responsibility assurance paper. At the time, the number of adult members in our church was insufficient to compare to the required number, but our members went to their acquaintances and relatives and asked for help and filled out the necessary number of signatures. That way, we were able to get all 108 signatures to guarantee our registration responsibility. I prepared all the necessary documents and went to, went to submit them to the related office. They skimmed through the documents, checked, uh, checked a few things wrong, and sent me back to prepare, prepare again. The third time I visited the related department, the official in charge was a different person than before. I said and uh, first gave my mother's testimony. I said how I, how I was changed and how the church was opened. The official listened to everything and took me to the head of the department. And she shared the story how I had changed in my mother's testimony. She said she would let us know the results after document examina examination. About two weeks later, I got a call. In a very gentle tone, she said to me, I would like to inform you that as of March 5th, your church became registered as an official denomination. Come and get the card. I and my church members were so happy that prayers were answered so quickly. And even the lawyer who helped us was amazed that he never expected this to happen. Everyone who knows the situation in Moldova says that this is a miracle of God. Last June 27th, Gwangju Manmin Church. It's the day of the pastor ordainment ceremony. The rehearsal of the candidates for ordained pastor are in full swing. We wonder how he felt when he heard that he was being ordained as a pastor. One day, I received a call from Elder Ronya Son of the Overseas Mission Bureau of the Head Church. He gave me some very surprising news. It was that the Central Church had selected me as a petition for a pastoral ordainment. I asked myself right away, am I really capable of being a servant of God? I asked the elder son to give me some time to pray and ask God to receive confirmation from him. After that, I prayed and fasted day and night, and after realizing that the decision of the main church was like the approval of God, I decided to go on the way of a servant of the Lord. Last April, we held our church's anniversary service online, and Pastor Ha Kyung Im, the speaker, informed the members that I was going to be ordained as a pastor. The response of the members was very warm. Some members even shed tears. After the service, members came to me and said so happily that I could finally become a pastor. 
And I remember that my mother wanted me to become a pastor before she passed away. This too was a big reason for my decision to become a pastor. This way also became a new turning point in my life. In my own eyes, I was lacking, but in God's eyes and with the help of the Holy Spirit, everything became possible. I believe that if Christ in me does what I do, I can achieve what He wants me to do. He visited this place the next day of the churching ordainment ceremony. At Samoa Mamin Church, a must visit place for overseas members. I am at Muan Mami Church, and behind me, there is the sweet water pool we used to immerse ourselves. I remember when I was submerged in this pool and vowed to run without sins to preach the holiness gospel. I believe that Mami members will become one and run towards New Jerusalem, so we will save many souls together. Mami, Muan. Now he came to Shinan, where the sea breeze is cool. Because it is difficult to see the sea in Moldova, he says that he feels the heaven just by looking at the sea. His busy schedule in Korea continues. Today, he was invited to a men's cell group worship service. The 11 parish members welcomed him with congratulations on the pastoral ordainment. Pastor Alexander Dabranu also shakes hands with each member and exchanges warm greetings. I couldn't visit Korea for the past three and a half years due to the COVID-19, but I was so happy to be in Korea now. Also, I was very happy to see many workers and believers here in the Central Church when I saw them overcome all the refinements with faith and ran together well. It made me shed tears, but I tried not to cry. Pastor Alexander Dabranu says he's learning Korea's local worship culture for the first time. Watching the worship carefully, he promised to apply it to the worship, worship back in his country. The best part of the cell group worship service is the delicious refreshments. Since Moldova is a country where seafood is scarce, the table is filled with food customized for him. They eat, eat, and eat. It looks like the food fit his taste, right? Pastor, which of the dishes served today uh, do you think is the best? Every food is good, but Korean pizza, seafood pancake is the best to me. Pastor, how about fish cake? I have eaten many fish cakes since I came to Korea, and the fish cake I ate today is one of the best fish cakes I have eaten. It's more delicious because it was prepared with love by our mummy members. 
Thank you. We have a question because some for Lee. I heard that you invited Pastor d a b a r a n u to your house of belonging. Is it true? Yes, it is true. What makes you long to invite him? I heard that he was blessed by seeing a pastor open the church in Moldova and had a revival and built a sanctuary. So I thought, oh, I should invite him to my house for our cell group worship service. And I actively asked to hold a cell group worship at my house. And he will become a precious pastor in Moldova, so I thought I should add some support to him. Thank you. We we'll also pray for your, you and your family too. Afterwards, they had time to share the ministry in Moldova. A graceful time to answer the questions of the members who were curious about the local missionary works. It became late at night without knowing the passage of time. His last schedule is the Sunday sermon. He finished all the schedule with happy memories of three weeks in Korea and went on his way to Moldova. A grain of wheat planted in faith has grown from a home church to a branch church and to the denomination. Sometimes he cried, sometimes he was desperate. and sometimes he was happy. He takes that great step today because he believes that all the moments he has run so far are for a bigger, bigger vision in the future. There is a very important element in preaching the Holiness Gospel. It is to believe in how powerful the Holiness Gospel is. We should open our mouths and launch the rocket of the Holiness Gospel. God will explode the rocket in a person's heart when necessary to suit the person's heart. That is why we should believe in the strong power of the Holiness Gospel and bear witness boldly. When God desires, the souls who have heard the Holiness Gospel will accept and change by the power. My vision never changes even though I became a pastor. The Gospel of Holiness must be preached to the ends of the earth. At this time, Internet mission is very important. One of my visions is to effectively preach the Holiness Gospel through various Internet media such as YouTube and TikTok. The providence of salvation, the secret of human cultivation, spirit, soul, and body, heaven, hell, and etc. We must preach the precious Holiness Gospel well. For this vision, I am giving and will give my whole life. Thank you, all MAMI members who are living a life of prayer, for praying for us. I am the fruit of your prayer. Moldova MAMI Church is also the fruit of your prayer. Thank you. MAMI, go for it.